You unlock the scriptures with a key called discernment. Within this book lies the wisdom of the ages, wisdom as vast as the universe itself. Wisdom for the body, wisdom for the mind, wisdom for the spirit. You are moving through a land of both light and darkness, false doctrines and true teachings. When you have learned to discern, you have just crossed over into the Torah Zone. Kaba, this is a good question. And uh, I want to interject here because in the interest of time, but this is a very good question you're bringing up. And a lot of people ask this question and a lot of people will challenge us. Look, the same passage in Leviticus that says a man must not sleep with a woman is the same one that says you can't wear garments made out of two different kinds of wool and says you can't eat shellfish and crabs and all that kind of stuff. So let me ask this question, Tabitha. Do you think Jesus is our ultimate authority on matters of diet? Yes. And I do believe that he is the one that um, is the son of the creator of the universe, and he's the word, so he wouldn't have eaten horse or wasp either. Okay, listen to this then. You, you've just accepted that Jesus is our ultimate authority when it comes to matter of diet. Here is Mark chapter 7. Hear me, all of you, and understand there is nothing outside a person that by going into him can defile him, but the things that come out of a person are what defile him. Are you without understanding? Do you not see that whatever goes into a person from outside cannot defile him since it enters not his heart but his stomach and is expelled? Thus he declared all foods clean. He did, not, he did not declare all foods clean. You will see when you read further up in that chapter, he was talking about... Well, wait, 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 Tabitha, I'm sorry, I'm sorry to interject because we're about out of time. But that's exactly what he did. He declared all foods clean. You just said he didn't declare all foods clean. This is the direct word of God right from the scriptures. Thus, he declared all foods clean. Fifteen seconds. How do you get around that? Case in point, Brian Fisher... A focal point. Brian is a typical mainstream Christian who believes and proclaims that it is perfectly okay for Christians to eat unclean creatures because Yeshua, Jesus, declared all food clean. Brian Fisher is about to find himself rightly rebuked in the Torah Zone. Hello, everybody. Here we are with uh, our friend Arthur Bailey. And Arthur, you're a, a Bible teacher. Tell us, uh, from your standpoint, do you see people being obedient to the Scriptures when it comes to health issues? Well, I don't think people understand what the Scriptures have to say about health. I mean, when we understand the fact that our body is a temple and that what we put in our body is uh, based on what we put in our body is, as Yeshua said, is not what goes in the body that makes a man unclean, it's what comes out. But we also know that when he talks about what we put in our body, it's the things that the Father has blessed. And as we put the things in our body that the Father has blessed us or that has, he has given to us to place in our bodies, then I think that uh, you know we're going to see the right response physically to the things that we put in our bodies as far as food is concerned. And why do you think so many Christians today uh, don't know these things because it's in the scriptures? Well, I think that from a lot of denominational perspective, what preachers have taught is that if you pray over your food, what folks don't realize is that the New Testament doesn't define what food is. And with the rejection of the Torah, uh, looking at Le Leviticus, uh, the Father explains to us what is food and the things that are unclean, he doesn't consider them food. Those things are abominable. 
I don't believe there's any such thing as unclean food because all food is clean. This is what the scripture tells us. But the question is, what is food? And so when people eat things that they classify as food, that doesn't make it food. That's, a, that's an abomination. It's unclean and it's never supposed to go in our bodies. And I think that's one of the reasons why we have some of the major health issues that we have. Mark 7, 15 through 23 NIV says Jesus declared all foods clean. Please comment. Some of you have noticed in the NIV version, turn to Mark chapter 7, and uh, Jesus is talking about, here we go. He had a dispute with the religious leaders about eating with unwashing hands. And Jesus said, it's not what goes in a mouth that defiles him, but it's what comes out of the man's mouth. And uh, if you go on to verse... Um, 18. And he said this to them when the disciples asked him concerning the parable, Are you also without understanding? Do you not perceive that whatever things from without enter into the man cannot defile him? He's talking about people who eat clean food, good food, but they haven't washed their hands. Because it enters not into his heart, but into his belly, and goes out into the draught and purgeth all meats. Now that's the King James Version. Most versions render it that way. Matter of fact, the original Greek does not say, and I challenge you to show it to me, the original Greek text does not say, in saying this, Jesus declared all foods clean. That was a footnote in one of the manuscripts they chose to use, the NIV translators. But friends, I can prove to you when we get to Acts chapter 10 that Jesus did not declare all foods clean. Now think about this. Jesus is talking about washing with clean and unclean hands. You think he's going to sweep away with one statement all of the writings of the prophets in something so vague and ambiguous? No, he's saying to eat with unwashed hands does not defile a man. That was the context of that statement. It is not in the King James and most other translations. The NIV is my least favorite translation. Sorry, guys. Brian Fisher proclaims that Yeshua, Jesus, declared all food clean. Even if Yeshua, Jesus, declared all food clean, unclean creatures are not food. Yeshua, Jesus, did not say, all unclean creatures are food and are clean. The food in question was bread. Mark 7, verse 2. Now when they saw some of his disciples eat bread with defiled, that is, with unwashed hands, they found fault. The specific food being discussed was bread, and the issue in question was whether or not it was lawful for Yeshua's, Jesus' disciples, to eat bread with unwashed hands. So those who proclaim Yeshua, Jesus, advocated eating unclean creatures in Mark 7 need to read in context and stop proclaiming Yeshua, Jesus, was advocating eating unclean creatures as food. Bread and stones, fish and serpents, eggs and scorpions, are these all food? Yeshua, Jesus, said in Luke 11, verse 11 through 13, If a son asks for bread from any father among you, will he give him a stone? Or, if he asks for a fish, will he give him a serpent instead of a fish? Or, if he asks for an egg, will he offer him a scorpion? If you, then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? People whether willfully ignoring God's dietary laws or uninformed about them, will eat just about anything, making no distinction between clean and unclean creatures. Although people in various cultures around the world eat snakes and scorpions, these creatures remain unclean creatures, as do pigs, shellfish, and all other unclean creatures. Yeshua, Jesus, showed that these creatures, serpents and scorpions, were not good gifts for fathers to give to their children to eat, as they are and remain unclean creatures. 
If snakes were good to eat, then when a child asked for fish and his father gave him a serpent, it could be considered an upgrade, as well as if a child asked for an egg and his father gave him a scorpion instead. Yeshua, Jesus, declared that serpents and scorpions remained unclean creatures, and good fathers would not give these unclean creatures as food to their sons. Another point Yeshua, Jesus, was making in Mark 7, verse 18 through 23, was that whatever food enters a person cannot spiritually defile his or her character. Evil thoughts, adulteries, fornications, murders, thefts, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, lewdness, an evil eye, blasphemy, pride, foolishness, all come from within the heart of man and are not caused by the food one eats. Yeshua, Jesus, did not say that unclean creatures could not physically defile a man. Isaiah 66, verse 17, with interpretation. Those who sanctify themselves and purify themselves pray over unclean creatures before eating them to go to the gardens, outdoor barbecues, after an idol of Mary standing in the midst of of them, eating swine's flesh and the abomination, shellfish and sea creatures without both fins and overlapping shedding scales, and the mouse, shall be consumed with disease together, says the Lord. It has been scientifically established that eating unclean creatures and drinking dirty, impure water can and does defile mankind physically. Yeshua, Jesus, was addressing the Pharisaic, Talmudic practice of ritual hand-washing before eating, which remains a practice to this day. Have you ever wondered why Yeshua gave the scribes and Pharisees such a hard time over hand-washing? Today we generally wash our hands before eating to prevent the spreading of germs and bacteria to our food. Is this what the Pharisees in Yeshua's day were concerned about? Or is there a deeper meaning here? Then Pharisees and scribes came to Yeshua from Jerusalem, saying, Why do your disciples disobey the tradition of the elders? For they don't wash their hands when they eat bread. He answered them, Why do you also disobey the commandment of Elohim because of your tradition? For Elohim commanded, Honor your father and your mother, and he who speaks evil of father or mother, let him be put to death. But you say, Whoever may tell his father or his mother whatever help you might otherwise have gotten from me as a gift devoted to Elohim, he shall not honor his father or his mother. You have made the commandment of Elohim void because of your tradition. You hypocrites! Well did Isaiah prophesy of you, saying, These people draw near to me with their mouth and honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. And in vain do they worship me, teaching as doctrine rules made by men. He summoned the multitude and said to them, Hear and understand, that which enters into the mouth doesn't defile the man, but that which proceeds out of the mouth, this defiles the man. Then the disciples came and said to him, 
Do you know that the Pharisees were offended when they heard this saying? But he answered, Every plant which my heavenly Father didn't plant will be uprooted. Leave them alone. They are blind guides of the blind. If the blind guide the blind, both will fall into a pit. Yeshua's, Jesus' disciples' hands were not so filthy that they couldn't eat with them. Anyone who has hands covered in dirt or filth should obviously wash them before eating. Yeshua, Jesus, was addressing the Talmudic practice of ritualistic hand washing before eating, which is not a Torah commandment of God. So if we want to put the water on our hands, we want it to cover all the way from our wrist all the way to the uh, very ends of the fingertips. In order to do that, we're going to need a significant amount of water. So it's good to fill up a nice big cup. If you use a small cup, this is going to be very difficult uh, to do. If you're in a shortage of water, you could follow a more lenient position of covering just simply up to the knuckles. So we do it as follows. You hold the hand this way so that everything is exposed. Your hand is totally exposed to the water. And you pour it twice. Hand is completely covered with water. Then we would take the towel, hold our hands up, and say, Baruch Atah Adoshem Elokeinu Melech Olam Asher Kishanu Mitzvotah V'Tzibanu Al Natsilat Yadayim. And then we dry the hands. You do not make a blessing while you're drying your hands. That wouldn't be proper. You should focus on the blessing. You shouldn't make a blessing uh, after you dry your hands, because then it's completely over. Rather, you should make the blessing before you dry your hands. You also try to hold the hands up so that if there is any water, it falls down on your wrist and not the other way around. The water from your, above your wrist is impure, and you wouldn't want it to fall below the wrist and then to fall uh, uh, on top of the wrist. That would be improper. So we want to keep the hands up when we're drying our hands. If you dry them, you remain silent. And that, then you've accomplished the washing of the hands. Yeshua, Jesus, was not declaring all unclean creatures as food that could be eaten in the Mark 7 passages. He was proclaiming that the Pharisees' ritualistic practice of hand washing before eating was not a commandment of God, but was a made up doctrine of man. Mark 7, verse 3. For the Pharisees and all the Jews do not eat unless they wash their hands in a special way, holding the tradition of the elders. Brian Fisher's focal point, his belief that Yeshua, Jesus, declared all unclean creatures that man considers food clean is wrong, and he has been rightly rebuked in the Torah zone.